sweet. Do some people in this room consider uh, consider yourself to be an anarchist? Do you? Oh, yeah? Okay. Well, that's a big step in life, right? It's like you can't really come back from it, you know? It's like an indelible mark on your soul, I think. If you ever stop being an anarchist, you will feel guilty about it. How about that? Right. I remember um, very reluctantly, it took me like a year and a half to finally conclude that I, I was an anarchist. I didn't want to be that, but I couldn't, I couldn't figure out what, what was wrong with it. I couldn't figure out what was right with anything other than anarchism. And I uh, said that to Murray. I said, uh, I'm starting to think that there's nothing that needs to be done in the social order that society can't do for itself and nothing the state can do that would make anything socially better. Does that make me an anarchist? And he said, yes, it does, Jeffrey. And I said, well, then I'm an anarchist. And he jumped like five feet forward. He said, congratulations and welcome and gave me the biggest handshake ever. So nowadays, when anybody, including at this event, comes up to me and says, guess what, I think I'm an anarchist, I, I try to reproduce this moment, you know, always. Congratulations, welcome to anarchism, right? Yeah. Your next presenter is an anarchist. Yes, that's the, that's the best thing you could ever say about a person, <laughs> right? Independent researcher, public speaker, radio talk show host, conference organizer, freedom activist from Philadelphia, PA. He has undertaken the task of assembling vast amounts of research in the areas of metaphysics, occultism, spirituality, symbology, and consciousness studies. And over the years, he's worked closely with activist groups in his area as a founding member and lead vocalist of the Philadelphia-based anarchist hardcore punk band, the founders, please welcome Mark Patio. Thank you so much, everyone. It's really great to be back at Anarchapoco this year. So thrilled to see all of you here today. I have a whole lot of material to cover here today in my presentation, so I'm going to jump right in. My presentation here today is entitled, Anarchy and the Occult Part 2, Religion versus Initiation. And it kind of builds on top of my presentation from last year, which was, of course, Anarchy and the Occult. So let's dive into it. Anybody who gets offended by something that I'm about to say here today, feel that emotion, let it flow through you, so be it. I am here to tell harsh, uncomfortable truth. My presentation style is often described as very intense, sometimes combative. You cannot gauge the truthfulness of information with your emotions. You have to run it through the logical and analytical aspects of the mind, but you can also use your intuition to gauge if it is coming from a place of heart-based intelligence as well. So if you use both of those, I think everything will be fine. I don't do this to make money. I don't do this to make friends. That's why I say to people to get as offended as you like. I only do this because I have a moral obligation in understanding what I understand to try to communicate these truths to others so that they can take action upon it to change our world. Hopefully in taking in the information that I present here today, it will act as a tapestry so you could take in the bigger picture uh, of the entire puzzle, okay? As David Icke said in his presentation, most people see the pieces, but they don't see the picture, okay? This is about big picture thinking. This is about getting to causal factors about why we are in the situation we are in as a species. So let's jump in right in with the topic of religion always a hot button topic, always controversial. But it doesn't always mean exactly what people think it means. It means so much more. To me, religion is the one and only problem in our world. The one and only problem that humanity is facing that is keeping it from going to the actual full potential of where it can be. 
And when we talk about religions, I don't just mean the cultural religions, okay? You have to wipe the definition of religion that, you know, our culture has given us uh, out of your mind and understand religion encompasses so much more. You know, government, politics, that's religion. You know, the donkey cult and the elephant cult. No two better examples of religion, okay? Science can be turned into a religion if it is trusted too much. The New Age movement or some pseudo-spirituality movements can also be characterized as religions. And then there's the big religion, the one that people believe in even more than government, that binds them all together. And that is the monetary system. A lot of people don't think of that as a religion, but I would claim even the belief in money constitutes a religious belief. If you're coming at the information I'm about to present today from any of these perspectives, you're going to find it very difficult, okay? So I am directly attacking the issue and going right to the psychological part of the mind and confronting it, okay? Not pushing that down, not having delicate sensibilities, face-to-face -face confrontation with the main issue, and that is religion. Now, what is religion? The word religion comes from the Latin verb religare, meaning to bind, to hold back by tying, or to thwart from forward progress. Religion is a system of sociological control based in unchallenged, erroneous, false, and dogmatic beliefs, which are specifically designed to hold back the progress of human consciousness. Religion is the head cage. Religion is the cage for the mind. And I'm here today to tell people that most anarchists are still subscribing to a religious thought process. And that is why they are not making the progress that they need to be making. Religion could be summed up in two words if we're being honest with ourselves. Mind control. People don't want to say it that way, but that's exactly the dynamic that we are talking about and it is very real. One of the biggest forms of mind control is government. We are here today because we believe that it doesn't have moral legitimacy. That's what an anarchist believes, that there is no such thing as moral legitimacy to the violence of the state. It is the most dangerous religion on earth. I call it the most dangerous cult on earth. Government is a worldwide religious cult based upon the false religious doctrine of authority, an illusion of a diseased psyche based entirely in violence and built upon the erroneous and dogmatic belief that some people are masters who have the moral right, quote unquote, to issue commands, while others are slaves who have a moral obligation, quote unquote, to obey the so-called masters. An absolute religious belief, yet most people in the world subscribe to it and believe it and, and stay attached to it with religious fervor. That's why it's so difficult to overcome because it's been ingrained for so many thousands of years and it has turned into a hardened dogmatic religion in the psyches of most people. Here's how it worked in the old world. There was one being that had authority vested in him or her. That was royalty. We called this kingship or royalty, okay? And they sat at the top of the hierarchical structure of the world, dictating commands to their slaves, okay? To those that they considered their subjects. Now today, you know, we think we've progressed so far, but all we've done is we've divested that authority into a few people, an oligarchical group of people calling themselves government. This is the so-called New World Order, where the Old World Order was kingship. The New World Order of rulership is government. And I don't care what you call it. You could euphemize it however you want to euphemize it. You can call it kingship. You can call it royalty. You can call it government. But I don't mince words. I tell people direct, right to their face, exactly how it is, and I call things what they really are. It's slavery. And if you believe in it, and you believe it's morally legitimate, you believe slavery, slavery is morally legitimate. So I don't like to euphemize words or use soft language. You know, I'm a city boy, I'm from the hard streets, and I use plain language right in people's face. Government is slavery. And that's what we all stand against. What do we want to see manifested in the world? We are here because we want to see anarchy manifest in the world. We don't want to see slavery continue. We want a world where there are no masters and no slaves. The word anarchy is derived from the Greek prefix an meaning without, the absence of, and the Greek noun archon meaning ruler or master. Anarchy does not mean without rules. It literally means without rulers. No rulers, no masters. That is the state 
of true, pure anarchy. So what does that really mean? It means true freedom. You tell people, you use the word anarchy with most people, and they think it means chaos. You know, we've all been through that, trying to get them to understand the real definition of anarchy. That's the real definition of anarchy, true freedom. So, where are we in this process of transformation, okay? We have to gauge where we're really at honestly, which is a big part of what this presentation is all about. I consider this person here on this long winding road leading to the mountaintop, here's the anarchist community. And here is where we say we want to go. It's a long, arduous journey. What we have to ask ourselves honestly and look at it and assess it with total honesty and looking at it without lying to ourselves, where are we really at? What progress have we really made collectively as a so-called movement, societally, to get to where we say we want to go? And, ladies and gentlemen, that process is not magical and it does not happen automatically. There are specific, actually very stringent requirements to getting to where we say we want to go. This is the same with any process. Whether it becomes becoming an expert in any particular field, learning any particular field of knowledge, there are requirements for taking that in and then putting it into the world and then actually making it manifest. And it's no different with anarchy. And I'm here, unfortunately, today to tell you that we are nowhere close to actually attaining that goal. And if we are telling ourselves that we're close to that, I feel that we're lying to ourselves. And the reason is we have not yet come to the underlying causal factors. We have not yet looked past the symptoms and gone to the true underlying causes of the human condition of slavery. So. Most anarchists, in my estimation, are still very mentally attached to false axiomatic premises, which could constitute religious beliefs. Axioms are fundamental beliefs that have become widely accepted as true because they are perceived to be self-evident or particularly useful to those who have accepted them. Most quote-unquote anarchists say that we want true freedom, that they want true freedom, but they yet cling to erroneous axiomatic beliefs which prevent them from understanding the true underlying causal factors that have led to the human condition of slavery. Anarchists, in most cases, are no less religious than other individuals in the world, unfortunately. Not all of them, but I would estimate most of them. Most anarchists erroneously believe that true freedom is possible to achieve without becoming aware of the governing dynamics which actually determine the amount of freedom which any given human society is able to experience. And that is based upon the quality of the aggregate behavior of the individuals which comprise that society. This is what determines whether a society is free or not. And that behavior has to be in alignment with morality. And if it is not, freedom is impossible to achieve or to attain. The erroneous belief systems of most anarchists are fundamentally holding back the development of their consciousness and their ability to align their minds and behaviors to the moral philosophical principles which are capable of changing our manifested conditions. Such erroneous belief systems are nothing more than inversions of reality and may be ultimately described as forms of mind control or religion. Why is this so? It is because most anarchists in the so-called anarchist community have absolutely zero understanding of what is known as the occult. They have no idea about it, they don't know what it is, they don't know what knowledge it comprises, and they haven't even begun on the journey to looking into it. So, people think this is what the occult is. Now, I'm not here today to tell you that there aren't aspects or sects of the occult that delve into practices such as this. But this is the Hollywood variant of the occult. And we have to kind of set that notion aside and understand the occult comprises deep knowledge and this wouldn't be an accurate image of the occult or occultism in my view. This would be. It is taking in universal cosmic knowledge about how the laws of nature actually work. That's a more accurate definition by a picture of what occultism really is. So let's look at a definition for the occult. 
The word occult is derived from the Latin occultus, meaning hidden. Occultism is the study of the hidden laws of nature, specifically those laws which are at work in the invisible, mental, and spiritual domain, far more than those that are at work in the visible or physical world. Therefore, occultism involves the acceptance of a much wider worldview than that which is ordinarily taken by the everyday person. Occultists, then, may be defined as those who study all the laws of nature, both those that are readily seen and those which are much more difficult to see with the physical eyes or with scientific measuring instruments alone. That's the difference between the average person who considers themselves, you know, someone who has any kind of faith in science versus the occultist who understands a much wider picture than just of the physical world is necessary. You heard David Icke talk about the physical reality is such a tiny sliver of the entire spectrum of existence. And that's absolutely the case. The occult is hidden science that the ruling class, that the masters, do not want the average individual to understand because the understanding of the occult knowledge would level the playing field and it would make slavery impossible. Until the occult is brought out into the light of day and understood by the average person, slavery will continue indefinitely. Bank on it, know it like you know your own name or you know the sun is coming up on the eastern horizon tomorrow. Slavery will continue until the occult is brought out of the realm of hidden knowledge and made common sense knowledge. What is the most deeply occulted knowledge on the face of the earth that our masters don't want us to understand? It is the knowledge of how the natural laws of behavioral consequence work in our lives and that we are bound by those behavioral laws. Natural law is a set of universal, inherent, objective, non-man-made, eternal and immutable conditions which govern the consequences of behaviors of beings with the capacity for understanding the difference between harmful and non-harmful behavior. That's a mouthful. Universal, it's everywhere. Inherent, it exists within creation. It is not man-made, it is objective and not subjective. It is eternal, it exists forever. You can never escape it. It is immutable. There is nothing anyone can ever do to change it. It is like any other natural physical law. But these are the behavioral laws that govern the freedom of entire societies, okay? And it governs the, the beings with the capacity to understand morality. So we're talking about higher than what we would call the animal kingdom. In the human kingdom and beyond, that is what natural law applies to. Those with an advanced central nervous system and brain that are capable of reason, are capable of heart-based intelligence, and are capable of understanding right from wrong. When human beings in the aggregate live in harmony with natural law and are therefore moral because they understand rights, they understand that a right is an action that does not initiate harm against another sentient being, okay, and cause harm against that being. That is what a right is, and most people cannot give you that definition, and that's why we're losing our rights. When human beings in the aggregate, in the collective, live in harmony with natural law and are therefore moral, they become and remain free. When human beings in the aggregate, in the collective, live in opposition to natural law and are therefore immoral, because they do or condone immoral behaviors, they become and remain enslaved. I refer to this dynamic of nature as the law of freedom. It could be stated like this, as aggregate morality increases, aggregate freedom increases. As aggregate morality declines, aggregate freedom declines. You only need to look at the result that we are getting right now. Do we have more aggregate freedom or do we have more aggregate enslavement? Well, then you will know, is humanity in the aggregate moral or immoral? That is the causal connection. To get away from religion, we must initiate ourselves into higher levels of knowledge. And this is what the occult was intended to do. It was intended to initiate potential learners into higher levels of knowledge about how natural law works. I gave a seven-hour I'm sorry, a nine-hour workshop two days ago on all of these dynamics of occult initiation. It could be called beginning, setting foot on the spirit, the true spiritual path. And there are, it's a five-fold process, a five-step process. Stop lying, especially to yourself. That's number one. Stop dreaming, 
Stop imagining the world to be some other way than it actually is. Accept it from where it is and then work to change it from there. Don't engage in cognitive dissonance. We have to disengage cognitive dissonance, which is believing two contradictory things simultaneously. Learn how to think. The actual process of truth discovery methodologies that were practiced as part of classical liberal arts education in the ancient world and that were given to the mystery tradition initiates in occult practices. Live in the true present moment in the here and now and bring that knowledge into the here and now on the earth to create the change that we want to see. And then activate the physical body because we will most certainly need to. Let's look at each one of these dynamics in turn. Stop lying. Especially to yourself. We have to look in the mirror and be honest about where we are at on the spiritual path and in our understanding of the dynamics of natural law, and then we have to be honest with others. But before we can tell the truth to others, we must first become fully honest with ourselves. We must be realistic about where humanity is as a species. Is the mindset of anarchy or the principles of moral behavior upon which anarchy is based truly propagating widely and manifesting in our world? We have to be honest with ourselves about that. Have anarchists as a movement, a so-called movement, accomplished the goals of the abolition of government and the restoration of our sovereign natural rights to any individuals anywhere on earth? And if such factors are the genuine measurements of a successful outcome for such a movement that we claim to be part of, and they should be, it is not about just setting an intention. It is about achieving the goal. Otherwise, why bother to do anything? Okay? Those should be our measurements for a successful outcome. Then I have to be honest with myself, and I must be honest with you, that our movement thus far must be assessed as a failure thus far. There is still time to turn it around, however, otherwise I wouldn't be saying a word. It is my contention that the anarchist movement is actually moving backwards, mainly because most anarchists accept as a false axiomatic premise that, quote, rights come from human beings. More than not, accept that as a premise. The existence of inherent rights within nature is the basis of natural law, and it is the necessary morality which will lead to the manifestation of true freedom. That is the basis of natural law and the, the moral behavior that we must put into practice. That rights exist inherently in nature because the actions, when we take an action, it exists in the 3D domain. Therefore, the characteristics of that action exist in the 3D domain. They are not subjective, they are objective. It follows logically, but most anarchists do not think about it that way because they still have a religious mindset about this. Most anarchists choose to blame external political or economic factors for the lack of progress in affecting real change in our society. But continued ignorance and denial of the existence of inherent rights under natural law is the underlying reason that slavery continues to be the human condition. And folks, you could accept that or not accept it, but it will never change the truth of that matter. I am not claiming that that is my opinion. I am telling you it works that way in the realm of nature, scientifically. Another erroneous axiom that most anarchists believe is, quote unquote, there is no higher power in the universe than humanity. They will accept, however, that every single piece of matter down to the subatomic particle is governed by universal physical laws, but they refuse to acknowledge that human behavior is governed by higher universal behavioral laws. The overwhelming prevalence of such an atheistic mindset in the anarchist movement is one of the main factors that is killing it. In almost every ancient mystery or occult tradition, potential initiates were outrightly refused to be taught if they displayed the hubris of believing man to be the ultimate power within creation. They wouldn't even teach the person who came to them looking for knowledge. I'm a little more egalitarian, and I think we don't have that uh, you know, time to be that selective. We have to put this information out there for anyone with eyes and ears to see. And here, we must stop lying to ourselves about what rights are and where they come from. The next dynamic of occult initiation as applied to the anarchist community, we must stop dreaming. And this doesn't mean stop engaging in imagination, that's very important. 
We have to stop telling ourselves the world is some other way than it actually is. We want to imagine it to be some different way. To stop dreaming in the occult initiation process is a proscription against magical thinking or cognitive dissonance as they call it in psychological circles. To stop dreaming means to actually acknowledge that the world is as it actually is instead of falsely imagining it to already be how you prefer to imagine it to be because your imagined version of the world is far more comfortable for you to accept. Moral relativism, the idea that rights come from man, we can change them at any time is one of these dreaming processes. Scientism, believing that science is the final arbiter of truth, okay? And thinking that you are going to learn about real spirituality without a deep understanding of natural law and somehow accidentally stumble into true freedom magically, these are all examples of such magical thinking of dreaming, as they called it in the occult. We have to get out of dreaming and we have to live in the re very real world and understand the laws of nature as they are working in the very real world. So, moral relativism is the absolute destroyer of anarchy and the dynamic that is holding people completely enslaved here on Earth. I've done social experiments over and over again in multiple cities asking people whether they, whether they believe rights are objective or subjective. And invariably, no matter where I do it, with, with, any, population, with any population, two out of three people are moral relativists. That's 66.6%, .6 not an accidental number, by the way, okay, of people who are moral relativists in our world. And that's what's killing anarchy. Moral relativism is the ideology or religion that objective morality does not exist inherently to nature and that right and wrong are subjective constructs which human beings may invent and arbitrate according to time, location, circumstance, whim, or preference. In truth and reality, morality is absolutely objective. Rights can never become wrongs, and wrongs can never become rights at any place or time, regardless of how many people believe or wish for it to be so. Absolutely. Any society of human beings that believes that there is no natural objective difference between right behavior and wrong behavior, and believe that human beings may arbitrarily create or decide what right and wrong are for themselves, is a society that can never truly bring their own behavior into alignment with moral, natural law. Cannot be done if that is the mindset, because everything else flows from mind and belief and then becomes manifested reality. Since the governing dynamics of human freedom are predicated upon the aggregate morality of a society, it is a total and permanent impossibility for true freedom or anarchy to ever exist or manifest in a society that embraces moral relativism. Can not happen. And this is why the anarchist is one of the biggest reasons the anarchist movement is not making any headway. I just got this uh, Facebook, I just responded to this Facebook post on the train on the way here. Yeah, I didn't fly, I'm probably the only person who didn't, that came here from a very long distance. I took trains and buses all the way from Philadelphia. I walked across the border, actually. <laughs> this person says, oh, if rights were magical, then no one could violate you or my right to exist unmolested. And that is why I tell you that rights are a man-made construct. Well, whoever said rights are magical? They're part of nature. There's nothing magical in that any more than matter is magical, okay? I answered him in the second part of his bogus contention and said, quote, rights are a man-made construct, that's his quote. This is the unspoken definition of moral relativism. This is the exact thought process that created human slavery in the first place, and it is the same thought process that perpetuates human slavery. See, I, I think that anarchists and the New Age community have so much in common. So much in common. I would love to bridge these communities and actually bring them into real occult knowledge and truth, okay? But they're still dreaming. They're still believing in their religious, uh, you know, axioms. They're both still dreaming, the anarchist community and the New Age movement. They have so much in common in many ways, but they're very different in other ways, okay? So, the so-called anarchist community, I put the anarchy symbol in quotes, in double quotes, most anarchists recognize that rulership over others is inherently morally Ill illegitimate. But that doesn't in and of itself equate to being spiritually awakened. 
You can know rulership is not morally legitimate, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're a truly spiritually awakened being and that you've gone toward enlightenment. The recipe for victory in any kind of battle, spiritual or otherwise, is to know yourself and know your enemy. So most anarchists understand that anarchy means no rulers. In that sense, the anarchist community knows the enemy because they understand the, the political you know, uh, rulers or masters of society that want control over them. Okay? But in large part, the anarchist community still lacks the understanding of self. They're not doing the deep internal spiritual shadow work that must be done to remove the erroneous axiomatic beliefs and get to the, the core truth that we must get to to understand the causal factors, the why of why we are in this condition. And that is because anarchy generally leaves an understanding of consciousness and spirituality at the door. And that's what I would like to see change in this entire community. That's why I'm here speaking today. Thank you. The, the New Age community, it's the exact opposite dynamic, okay? In the sense that they know about consciousness and self to a much greater extent, but they don't know that the enemy is government. I go to New Age expos and I ask people, hey, you're, you, are you a Democrat or a Republican? And they'll give me their political preference. None of them will say government is slavery. You know, they believe in the donkey cult or the elephant cult, unfortunately. They're still members of those cults, okay? So they don't understand that true spirituality must be based in anarchy because anarchy and rulership are always based upon violence. I'm sorry, authority and rulership are always based upon violence and are always, therefore, they are always immoral. The spiritual community should get that more than anybody, but they don't. They have a religious block in their mind that somehow government is morally legitimate. But they don't see that authority and, is, and, right. and rulership and government is based entirely on violence and coercion. So that's where they're falling short. And they have a religious belief. Most participants of the New Age religion have not rejected the paradigm of politics and still believe voting is a possible way of improving the human condition. Most New Agers are complete, completely accept government rulership, yet they consider themselves to be somehow, quote-unquote, spiritual. And nothing could be further from the truth. See, they have to understand true spirituality as well. That's dreaming. These are examples of dreaming. Cognitive dissonance. Putting two contradictory notions in your mind and believing them both simultaneously. The next step of occult initiation is to learn how to think. And our educational institutions are not teaching us this. They are indoctrinating us into what to think. To learn how to think in the occult ancient schools, they use the two truth discovery methodologies of the trivium and the quadrivium. And most anarchists have never even heard of these. The trivium and quadrivium are the methodologies of truth discovery which enable the individual to learn how to think. These are true critical thinking methodologies. These tools help individuals to remove their erroneous belief systems, their religions, their magical thinking, and come to accurate conclusions about what is true and what is not true, including the truth about the natural laws that govern human behavior. Both are, not at all surprisingly, completely absent. They have been completely removed from the modern educational system because our masters don't want us to have access to the same tools of true learning that they have access to. That would level the playing field of power. The trivium from the Latin tres tria and the Latin via. Th tres tria means three and via means path, road, or way. It was grammar, logic, and rhetoric, or in the ancient mystery school traditions, they taught it as knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, which is the way I like to look at it. It was the threefold path to truth, the threefold methodology of truth discovery. And we'll talk about what it actually is. The quadrivium was the quantification aspects that went hand in hand with the trivium as an adjunct to it. It was arithmetic or pure quantification of numbers. Geometry, which quantifies space, music, which quantifies time, and astronomy, which quantifies both time and space, the movement of the uh, macrocosmic bodies of our world. This was the fourfold quantification tool set that acted as a companion to the trivium process. 
This next slide I'm going to show you is probably the most important single slide you will ever see in any presentation. And you know, I'm not saying that to have hubris about the importance of my information, but I'm telling you this is the most occulted knowledge and nobody ever really gets how our reality is manifested. When you see this, hopefully it will put some of the puzzle pieces together and you'll understand why they have to attack things from the realm of available information. That is the place that our entire worldview is based upon. This is the first step of the trivium. You could, you could look at it in the classical, esoteric, or modern sense. It was grammar. All of the building blocks of knowledge of available information that you need to know to come to an accurate understanding of what it means and then to act rightly upon it. So it was grammar, knowledge, or in the modern way, if you want to look at it as a computer model, this is input. You have to program the computer with all the necessary information in order for it to process it and then output it, okay? The second step of the trivium as we move forward was logic. In the, ancient, in the esoteric trivium, they called it understanding, okay? In the modern, it's called the processing stage. Once you have the information that you need, then you, you are processing it and you are removing logical inconsistencies like a computer processor would process it, great amounts of information. This is what forms an understanding or helps us to understand what the knowledge we have taken in means. And that's what we base all of our decision making for what we are going to do in life upon, okay? Then the next step as we move forward is we actually put our behavior out into the world based upon the knowledge that we have taken in or the ignorance that we have remained in and then based upon whether we've come to an accurate understanding of it or whether we remain confused as to what it means. But that behavior is what is ultimately determining the collective quality of the human condition. And then what happens is we get a result when we act. When we all act collectively together in society, we get a manifestation. We get a result in our lives. This is the manifested reality that we all share together here on earth. So where do the dark occultists, the sorcerers of our world, the mind manipulators, the social engineers, where must they control this process from? They have to con control it from the base level, from the level of available information. And that is why they must hide the true knowledge of how freedom works and or dissuade you from looking into it by calling it, it's evil. Or you don't need to know about it, that's some quaint religious bullshit, okay? No, the occult is neither of those things. The occult is knowledge about how nature works and how the human psyche actually works. And you know what? Our masters know it perfectly. And we don't know it at all. And that's why they're kicking our ass. That's the exact reason they're kicking our ass. Anarchists and scientism, another religious belief system most anarchists fall into. An scientism is an exaggerated trust in modern scientific institutions to the extent that the individuals extending that trust believe that the scientific institutions are the only source of verifiable truth, that they're the arbiters of truth. Many anarchists still believe in such an institutionalized worldview of science. To a great extent, they also accept without question the completely outdated and currently disproven paradigm of Newtonian materialism. Many within the anarchist movement cannot grasp that true science is a methodology of truth discovery and not a belief system as dictated by modern worldly institutions of science. Ignoring whole data sets and fudging data to fit their own deeply entrenched worldview are the foundational hallmarks of government grant money funded scientismic materialism. That's where we're getting our so-called science from. The emerging modern sciences of epigenetics and holistic biology are just now beginning to turn the tide in such a worldview by rightly incorporating consciousness and metaphysical understanding into their research methodologies. So if you're not familiar with those emerging sciences, I suggest you become familiar with them. It's called epigenetics, holistic biology, or new biology. Anarchists and atheism. By becoming atheistic, most anarchists are buying into what I call polarization or mind control dialectics. It is a left brain dominant dialectic. The prevailing worldview is that matter is pr primary and supreme. God or spirit is non-existent. The physical world is all there is. Only physical laws exist, but no natural laws that govern behavioral consequences exist. 
Consciousness is either purely mechanical and existing only as electromagnetic impulses in the brain, or it is meaningless altogether. The institutions of science are the sole arbiters of truth. This is the scientismic or atheistic worldview that is based entirely in left brain imbalance. Converse to that, why so many uh, anarchists fall into that left brain worldview is because the opposite is equally a crock, okay? The, the religionist worldview, right brain dominant worldview. It is that spirit is primary and God is all powerful. The, the physical world is evil or should be ascetically shunned. God demands strict human obedience to his arbitrary and often conflicting set of rules. Goals in the physical world should not be focused upon, but rather we should focus on the promised afterlife with God. This is equally as imbalanced of a worldview, but toward the right brain modality of thought. And this is why a lot of atheists, uh, a lot of anarchists gravitate toward the opposite side. You have to understand, it's a polarization dialectic. It's to put people away from the truth, which lies in a holistic balance between left and right brain. So, if you think you're going to get anarchy from either one of these two completely do, uh, uh, imbalanced worldviews, I'm here today to tell you that's also not possible. Cannot happen. Because these are two worldviews that are set up as a deliberate dialectic to hold people back from the truth about what anarchy really is and what will actually take us there. Anarchists who use the slogan, no gods, no masters, no gods, no masters, instead of no masters, no slaves, okay, they are actually immersed in the polarization dialectic of atheism or scientism versus religionism. Such dialectical programming is deliberately socially engineered by the ruling class to prevent an understanding of true morality and natural law and to therefore prevent the emergence of true freedom. Natural law is not a religion or a belief system. It is a science and we can come to the understanding of it through scientific investigation and methodology. I am about the most skeptical person you could possibly imagine. I come from a totally scientific background. I studied engineering at an Ivy League university in my youth, okay? So, I'm not religious, nor am I atheistic. I take the balanced approach of trying to determine how the laws of nature actually do work. Science, in the way that we look at it today, isn't going to tell us that, and neither is religion. They are both consciousness prisons that we have to move beyond. Natural law is a science of morality that can be directly observed in the 3D world. The evidence of the existence of natural law is the resultant state which humanity receives as a direct consequence of its aggregate behavior, or in other words, the human condition itself. The manifested reality will determine what the causal factors are, and the causal factors will bring us the manifested reality. We only have to look at the causal relationship by observing the realm of causality, not addressing the symptoms, getting down to the actual disease that is the underlying causal factor of human slavery. So, are human beings free? Are we free to exercise our rights unrestrained? Or are we living in a perpetual state of duress? The threat of violence being conducted upon us if we don't comply with the commands of the so-called ruling class. The natural law of freedom has a quantifiable effect Aggregate freedom is directly proportional, directly proportional to aggregate morality. Consequences will be manifested into the human condition as a direct result of the moral quality of aggregate human behavior. We collectively reap the result of the behavior which we collectively sow. Eternally immutable principles of governing dynamics in nature. Understand it, and if you understand it, you will understand how we will build true freedom together. For the, the left brain among us, there's the scientific equation. The sum of freedom is directly proportional to the sum of morality. And it can never be any other way. That is a natural law of the universe. And it's what most quote-unquote anarchists have zero understanding of as yet. Live in the present moment. To live truly in the present moment, we have to get away from this diverse of infighting and all these factions of anarchy. There's no such thing. There is only under the understanding that anarchy is true freedom based upon natural law. Device of infighting between the so-called anarchist factions must end. Humanity is in the midst of a war for our very freedom. 
fighting among ourselves is the equivalent of combatants on the same side of a brutal war suddenly turning their weapons on each other. Or slaves on the same plantation fighting each other instead of fighting their so-called masters. There is only one true divide that separates humanity into two distinct types of individuals. That there is unfortunately a huge chasm in between. The criterion for this divide is whether or not an individual believes in authority and therefore believes that there is somehow moral, quote unquote, legitimacy, quote unquote, to human slavery. And we know that there can never be. To live in the present moment means that we must develop the ability to release our attachment to our own ego. And this is the problem in the anarchist community. Being trapped in ego can make one unteachable or unable to learn new and hidden truths. We think we have it all figured out already, but we don't understand there's much more to learn. Ego attachment is a mindset that constitutes a religion. Some anarchists refuse to acknowledge that there is a higher power or law of governing dynamics which exists in creation and determines the outcome of manifested reality based upon free will-based behavior. A prerequisite to being allowed to be taught in the ancient mystery traditions was an acknowledgement of a higher power than man, a force which also put into place the unseen spiritual laws that govern the consequences of behavior. To begin the process of shedding ego attachment, one must develop the ability to say one of the hardest things in the world that there is for the individual to say, I was wrong. Finally, to activate the physical body, because most certainly, ladies and gentlemen, we will be needing the physical body in this war for our freedom, so never neglect it. Mind and body are inseparably connected. Mental acuity is directly fostered through physical activity and care for the physical self. The activation of the physical body is a vitally important part of self-knowledge that should never be neglected. Real world changes have always required physical work. Modern anarchists will need to be prepared to put away the keyboard and put boots on the ground whenever and wherever they may be needed. Physical health is critically important should one be required to engage the self-defense principle and that principle should never be taken off the table in the fight for our freedom. No rulers does not mean no rules. Too many anarchists believe that. Unfortunately, many anarchists erroneous belie erroneously believe that anarchy means no rules. Anarchist slogans that read no rules are an ignorant misdirection. There are always rules in the form of eternal, moral, and spiritual laws of creation called natural law. The foundation of true anarchy is firmly rooted in these laws of morality in which rights are inherent to creation itself. It is natural law itself which endows us with the right not to be aggressed upon, violated, ruled externally through coercive means, or enslaved. There is a great psyop being perpetrated by the mainstream media, Hollywood, politicians, and social engineers to co-opt the term anarchy and spread the false belief that anarchy is synonymous with chaos and violence and no rules or lawlessness. Rules of morality are a fundamental aspect of any society that is based in true anarchy. It can never possibly be any other way. Activate true care is my sixth and final. I'm adding one of the steps to the, initial, the initiation process. This is the generative principle, care for truth and care for the rights and freedoms of all that is heart-based intelligence. We must come from the understanding that as one suffers, all suffer. And so we must eliminate suffering for human beings and all other beings as well. The great work to end the slavery of humanity will take an enormous shift in consciousness. We must be willing to develop true care, heart-based intelligence that is necessary to learn the spiritual principles of natural law and apply them in our lives and in our communities. We must first learn this occulted knowledge very well ourselves and then we must teach it to others so that together we can meet the requirements to manifest what we all say we want for the future of humanity. Peace, love, and anarchy. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time and attention.